players have put in the miles. The new shirts have been printed with some new names to go on the back. Fans have been allowed back into stadiums, including a beautiful trip back home. And the three of us are all in the same room to do a podcast. Finally, it feels like proper football is back with the 2021-22 campaign starting one week today. It was wonderful because when you walk out before the game, so it was a bit warm in the change room, so we came out and sat sort of down at the bottom of the stand here and the noise picked up from there. And to think there's what only about two and a half thousand stag supporters in tonight. Uh, they made an awful lot of noise. I think all the players surprised them a little bit. Some of them have obviously been here longer. But the new lads who haven't played in front of crowds here, and myself included, it was a it was a lovely feeling. Nigel Clough is delighted to see fans back home and his side certainly wet the appetite in midweek as they beat Coventry City by a goal to nil. The second win over Championship opposition during pre-season thanks to a Danny Johnson brace at Hull. But pre-season results count for absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. So as Clough's men play a behind closed doors training game at Nottingham Forest this afternoon with no media coverage, We'll cast our eye over pre-season performance, the new signings and much, much more in between as a new season dawns and excitement levels go through the roof. As always, have your say on your team in the comments. This is the Mansfield Matters Podcast. In just one week's time, Mansfield Town will be back at the One Call Stadium starting the 2021-2022 campaign and we will be back watching them in person and I for one cannot wait. This is the podcast for the fans, by the fans. It's the Mansfield Matters podcast because Mansfield will always matter and for the first time since before the pandemic, this is a ridiculous thing to say, myself, Cam Felton and Nathan Edge are all back in this room and oh my goodness, what a change it has been in that time. First and foremost, before we go anywhere else, congratulations to Mr Cam Felton over there in the far corner, who is now a dad. It's it's so strange. It's a week on and it, it's, it just sounds so weird still. Um, and it- yeah, what a 17 months it's been in the pandemic it's just all things change and the only thing that's normal at the moment is the fact that football's coming back it's just a, been a whirlwind the last week or so and of course you join Nathan in the dad club um, as well who uh, had little Oliver towards the back end of last season so both new parents how are you both awake because Nathan you had about two hours sleep but I'm told it wasn't your <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't no, Oliver, was it? It was the dogs keeping me up last night. I had, I had two hours, and Oliver had about nine. So I don't know how that that worked out. But uh, yeah, you see what happens. You know, when we actually can't attend football, we end up becoming dads. Uh, so. Now you see, <laughs> I gave you a present um, towards the back end of last season, didn't I, for for little Oliver? Um, yes. Um, which you've probably put in the bin by now, whatever. Um, I've given Cam uh, his present today, but what I didn't tell you is that I've got a present for both of you two guys. Um, which is a, a, a you know it's the, the same present effectively your lives have changed somewhat since you know we were last in this room doing a podcast we will talk about Mansfield in a minute but it's the first time we've been together so the first time we've been able to give you these uh, these presents um so uh, obviously you know Nathan can't see what I've got in my pocket Cam I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a second okay I'm going to ask you both to uh um, just put your your hands out in front of you if you don't mind. Um, Nathan, that one's uh, for you. Cam, that one's for you. You can open <laughs> your eyes, exactly guys. Cam, it is. I know exactly what it is already. Do you? Are you I, sure I about that? Because that's how you've ended up with a child. <laughs> I know exactly what it was as soon as you put it in my hand. Yeah. 
that, that, that's textbook, Craig, isn't it? That is textbook. I mean, do you want these back or are you going to join us? You know, I mean, in, in actually, yeah, lads, can I have them back if you don't mind? <laughs> yeah, yeah that'd be yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Can we really yeah. show them on camera as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll keep them there just because you know I don't want to join the dad yeah. club. Yet. Family, yeah, show, so, family show, family show, family show, kids. Family show. It's a Saturday afternoon, so there you go. <laughs> uh, no, socially, congratulations, um, but. Cam, in true Cam fashion, whilst you know your daughter Evelyn was being born into the world, you were on bloody Twitter. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I can confirm that my my daughter was born at twelve thirty seven last Saturday, and I didn't. I'd, I'd not been. I was on my phone watching. I, I believe I was watching uh, traffic cops downstairs at Lincoln Hospital. COVID rules: you're not allowed on the ward. Uh, between visiting hours so I had to sleep on the floor at Lincoln County Hospital which was not only pretty horrific because it was a hospital and a hospital floor but the fact it it was Lincoln so (laughs) um, but I I was watching that and then next thing I know I get a phone call I need to go upstairs I didn't even realise what time it was so I didn't know that we'd kicked off and then it was only uh, I think we would have been halfway through second half by the time I actually realised we we were actually we'd actually kicked off. I was like, oh, of course we kicked off now. I checked the score and we were winning. And I checked the time code on the um, on the tweet when Danny Johnson scored. And yeah, it was four minutes before she was born. So I was like, oh, that's quite that's quite nice. Now this is where you've let us down. Nathan's already let us down because he hasn't put Stephen in Oliver's name. He's gone with Oliver Hudson Edge, which I guess is fair enough. But you know, you did make a promise and break it. So <laughs> yikes! Yeah. Um, now, Cam, you we were having discussions for a long time. You were going to put Amber in the name. What happened? Um, my, uh, basically, I, I pitched this idea. It had been um, two weeks ago, Friday, uh, to my partner, and she was all for it. And then it came to her and she was literally holding my little girl in her arms and we were talking about it sort of like talking about names we'd always always got Evelyn in our in our minds that was that was always going to be uh her name and and there was no swaying from that and then the second name um was was between Amber and Rose and we, we were thinking about it we were talking about it and then my partner she just suddenly clicked like I know exactly why you want Amber in your name it took her a whole week to figure it out and then she wasn't so keen on it so we've, we've gone with uh, Evelyn um, uh, Evelyn Rose Felton so. now you see go on Nath <laughs> you're going to you're, you're going to now reveal I mean, to um, Cam's missus who is watching this by the way um, so you know that's that's let's put him in hot water. Why is you know Rose significant? Oh, well, I don't know. If I feel bad now. I don't know. If I, now I know she's watching. I feel the pressure in putting in bad water, but in in, in the hot water. But you know, <laughs> how long will it take her to figure out it's Danny Danny Rose? <laughs> See, we, were, we were then thinking in the car, obviously, Danny Johnson scored. So we were like, well, we've got to fit Danny in here somewhere. Is it possible to change it? We're thinking. Um, I, I don't really know because a lot of people already know the name and oh, Craig's already written a card it says Evelyn Rose Felton so we're now like would you like to we... read the card no I'm not reading it <laughs> I'm not reading it out on air no chance it's almost as bad as that gift we just got isn't it oh yeah it's pretty horrific but uh, to, <laughs> true Craig fashion but uh, we were thinking like oh could we fit Danny in here so, so we were thinking Evelyn Danny D-A-N-N-I I mean or D-A-N-I and it Danny Rose well, I was like, no, we're not, I mean, gonna, not gonna get away with this somehow. No, I don't think you are. Uh, let's turn our attention back to football. We'll have plenty of opportunity to rib you about the name um, <laughs> in the future, and you know, any future children you two may have, or Simon may have. Um, I can't even remember who scored. I think they were born at they were born January time. I think they were. But I can't it remember. It was before the Carlisle game. Uh, so it wasn't the day of a game. No. See, both you two had your children on the day of a game. So, you know, that's why the name thing comes in. So, size so exempt from that. So, there you go. Uh, let's turn our attention back to football. As always, keep your comments coming in. Want to hear from you guys. Have your say on your team. Um, any questions you've got about pre season, any opinions you've got on the new players so far, get them in. I've got the phone here to uh, keep up with some of your comments and, uh, and answer some of your questions and some of your discussion topics. Nathan, um, as you know, you've not been here for a while. Um, um, the the podcast bell has been my responsibility, but today you're back in the room. Uh, it's it's there in front of you. I'm so feeling the pressure. You I put my drink feeling, over there as well. Yeah, so. I'll move you. Dr- I'll move, <laughs> tell you what, I'll move you drink to the I'll other side. Go, yeah, go fishing and say go. galvanize. <laughs> There you go. Your drink is now the other side. So there you go. It's in between you and Cam. Oh, um, so whenever we say galvanized or <laughs> solidified or toxicity, 
You're there already on the bell. Let's there you go. That last one is not going to be used at all. Absolutely this not. Uh, let's delve straight into it then, obviously. Let's um, go to one of the comments first and foremost, uh, and then uh, we'll work our way back from there. We'll talk about the preseason friendlies. We'll talk about some of the new signings. We'll talk about what we might be missing. Um, we'll have another interesting discu- discussion point as well about one of my favourite things, the match day programme. Uh, we'll have a discussion about that as well, if I remember. Um, first uh, first. Um, comment this afternoon is from Glenn. Uh, good afternoon, Glenn. Uh, afternoon, lads. Genuinely cannot wait for next Saturday. Looks like a promising partnership between Hawkins and Johnson. Uh, now, Cam, we'll start with you on this one. Obviously, Hawkins and Johnson are, are pretty much um, very much uh, the two who have started pre-season the most up top. Definitely looks like Nigel Clough is trying to form a partnership uh, between those two. Even more so when we sort of saw um, at Hull um, that he brought Bowery on, played him at centre half rather than putting him up, up top, rather than putting Hawkins there who can play there. And then again, Bowery plays centre half against um, against Baseford, which we went to on on Wednesday. Very much says that those two are going to be the, the front two with the backup of the likes of Oates, you know, uh, Sinclair, Lapsley in there as well. Yeah, I'll say Clough. Def, def, I wouldn't say favourites, but he, he, he favouritising a, a certain way of playing, a certain style. And uh, to be honest, in, in large parts of the game, it was it was very effective against um, against Hull at commentary. Um, you'd have thought on Tuesday night, uh, finally back at the One Call Stadium, you'd have thought, wait a minute, who's the championship team here? Because it it was either we were playing absolutely out of our skin, or commentary were just not really at the races. It, it just seems that we the, the way that we were playing was just fantastic, and and the style was very much set up in a way that we can get the ball into the box and get. Get Hawkins and and, and John. Uh, obviously, Hawkins is, is six foot six, so you know exactly where it's going if you deliver a ball into the box. But Danny Johnson, definitely one of these strikers where you're like, if you're a defender, real handful and like, for God's sake, stop running around. He just runs and runs and runs. And he's fantastic and really gets makes a nuisance of himself. So could really be a danger this season. Yeah, certainly something that we we were missing last last year, Nath. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we all know that we, especially after Nigel Clough took over, we we certainly sorted out the situation of, of being able to create chances. We started creating a lot more, but um, we wasn't really getting it in the in the back of the net. So, you know, it's, it is promising to see partnerships forming, or you know, already uh, through preseason. I think that's you know, you look at preseason, and yeah, you want to win them all, but results really don't matter. And in some ways, you know. Like that comes there. Obviously, we 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 sort of, we did outplay Coventry. It was a young Coventry side, but that doesn't really matter either. Well, I think what really matters is by looking at our own players, very sort of putting them under the microscope and seeing how they form partnerships and uh, and how sort of our patterns of play start coming together. And I think the the more the games have gone on, uh, let, let's forget about Matlock. Apart from it being a nice nice day out, but the more the games have gone on, you you can see those partnerships and you can see those patterns of play starting to improve. And I think. Um, yeah, that's the most promising thing for us. So let's just hope that that obviously continues into the season. Uh, but most importantly, I mean, although it has been promising, still against Coventry, we created so many chances and we only got one goal. So if there, you know, hopefully we can start being a bit more clinical when it comes to those. I know we were against Retford, but um, but yeah, we, it's at least we are getting in a much better position than we were for a lot of last season. One casualty of, you know, the, the Johnson um, and uh, Hawkins partnership, Nath, uh, is that of Jamie Reid, who's left for Stevenage. We mentioned it a little bit in our pre-match uh, podcast uh, against Matlock, which I thought was uh, a nice little little thing for us to do. Um, but obviously, I, I, again, I think let's delve into that a little bit more. It was clear that you know, Clough wanted to bring in someone a little bit more, someone a little bit more clinical in front of goal. If the offer was there, you know, we we got a little bit of money for him. We don't know how much because it was undisclosed. The best thing for him to do is move on with his career, and we wish him um, all the very best. But certainly, if you look at you know the, uh, the the quality we've got in the club, he wouldn't have been in the top three of front men, would he, for starting? No, I'd have been very disappointed if he was. You know, I can kind of understand. You know, Nigel Clough really had to stick with him last season and I was surprised that he let him go because he was so you know he did praise him a lot but obviously that was his man, man management he is going to praise him because he wants him to be confident he wants him to perform and and you can't fault him for his hard work he always had that about him but it just never never really worked out for him I, I think Cam said he's actually scored today for, for Stevenage against Dover so you know you never know it might 
something might click into place from another club, but it wasn't happening here. And I, I think when you look at the team, the players that we've got, you know, even when you look at our young players, I'd put Tyree Sinclair in, in ahead of him any any time of the day at the minute. So it would have been a player that I think it the, it made sense for both parties for him to move on. Yes, it's. Uh... <laughs> Turn that one on. Uh, you know, I'm not used. To, I'm not used to like having people here. I'm used to like just having it on all the time. So uh, I think it's one of those, isn't it, where um, you know Nathan mentioned Sinclair. Cam, we saw him obviously uh, during preseason. We saw him on Wednesday night as well. Two fantastic free kicks. So glad we scored all the goals in the first half because the second half we just got talking to someone and just didn't <laughs> didn't see any of it whatsoever. But he is one of those players, isn't he? Who it's a big big season ahead. For from him, and I think, like Nathan said, I think he would have been ahead of the likes of Jamie Reed. He certainly is ahead of, of Jordan Bowery as well at, at the moment, by virtue of the fact I think the evidence is there. You know, Bowery's filled in at centre half because I think we definitely still a defender short, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but in terms of seniority, you would have thought Bowery would have been ahead of Sinclair, but it's actually vice versa. And even the likes of Nathan Kane and Jimmy Knowles that are breaking on the scene, Nathan Kane, especially in this pre season, has been absolutely fantastic, top scorer. Yeah, I'll say he looked dangerous against um, against Alfreton, dangerous against Baseford. Uh, that link up partnership on Wednesday night, whilst um, I mean, go and watch the highlights for yourself. Because the the play between um, Keaton Ward, Tyree Sinclair, Jimmy Knowles, and Nathan Kane on that pitch was, was fantastic, and it was so dangerous. And they get the ball into the good right positions. Finishing it off is is a little bit of a worry sometimes because. They are still young players, but they need to be in the back of the net, especially against teams like Baseford. Um, no disrespect to them, but if players like Knowles and Keaton Ward and Nathan Kane, who are going to struggle more than someone like Tyree Sinclair to get into the team, they need to be proving themselves, in, um, especially in them sort of games. Uh, I, obviously, we don't know who's playing today in the game against Forest. Obviously, that's only a training game now, so we'll find out probably tomorrow what's happened in that one but um be interesting it'll be a, i'd imagine it'll be a mix between first team and, and a bit of, a bit of youth but then again do you use it to go all guns blazing and use it as a training match and, and set up for next saturday you see the thing is as well i mean even though this wasn't on the original pre-season fixture list nigel clough mentioned it i believe after the hall game there's a game with buxton on Tuesday, it's on their website. Um, not sure of kickoff time. I think it might be seven thirty, and it also says stays eleven on there. So obviously, we've not confirmed which side we're going to send as yet. But I think I think you're right. I think had today's game with Nottingham Forest under twenty three taken place at the RH and been a more of a more of a fixture rather than a sort of a, a training schedule, I think we definitely would have seen. Um, you know the eleven who was going to play against Bristol Rovers next week, but I think today I think he might go the opposite way around. Now I think he might utilise it as a little bit more of a a training exercise. Try a few partnerships, maybe try say for example Kane alongside Johnson or Knowles alongside Hawkins and vice versa for those situations where the two aren't going to be available for the suspensions, the cup games, the injuries, that sort of thing, and then have a look at an hour. 70 75 minutes on Tuesday um against books and although obviously there is a bit of a risk there in terms of knocks and niggles but for me personally I, I don't think you can leave it essentially what would it be 10 12 days from the Coventry game to the start of the season they've got to have another fixture um in there so I, do I think... you then use that game as um just to get players minutes obviously it was after the Coventry game, we said it was 50-50 between Reese Oates and, and um, George Lapsley. Mm. And the reason that Lapsley got it ahead was because Oates collided with Gordon and then obviously he was missing for that game. Do you get those players that maybe haven't had much game time like Kellen Gordon, like Reese Oates, do you give them the, the go-ahead for t something like today and Tuesday to, to just get minutes into the legs? I think for me, Nathan, I, think, I don't know about you, but I think it's... Uh, it, the one person that was missing from this, what would be probably our starting lineup, was Kel Gordon. Obviously, the lack of minutes for him. I think, um, with all that taken into into account, I think we probably might see a, a stronger side than what we would have done at uh, Buxton on Tuesday night. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, like I said, the Coventry game. I think we were very much uh, almost at full strength. Um, you never know. We, we, maybe we are playing our full strength side today, but 
yeah, maybe they've they've gone private for a reason to keep it out of the uh, you know out, out of the press away from Brussels Rovers. Well, is, I think it, is it mind games? I know? think it's more well, not uh, mind games, but you know what I mean. Is it? I think it's more of a COVID reason. I think because obviously Forest, their first yeah. team, their camp had a number of cases. They cancelled a number of their friendlies, and I think um, they're trying to keep. Forest under twenty threes in house, um, obviously just in case they're needed um, as well. So I think that's probably why they've sort of gone. It's not a media game because that restricts the amount of people there. I mean, they could have got the Mario Steck on on Twitter. Like you know, he could he could have done it because he's not not busy, is he? Really? <laughs> <laughs> that is also very very <laughs> true. Uh, let's delve into some more of your comments. Keep them coming in. Have your say on your team. Uh, Mark says afternoon afternoon to you. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, Gary says hi. Really excited to see our new strike force in competitive match. Hopefully. Uh, they'll gel well and get loads of goals Paul says Anything, anyone think that Knowles might go out on loan again and what's your thoughts on Steck he will be third choice or will he go out on loan and Andy says can't wait for Saturday come on you stags let's talk about the first one of those two comments there uh, that two part comment there Nath uh, Jimmy Knowles and um, he had a for me he, this preseason was a real opportunity um, for him um, to sort of put his name in the headlights, get his name on the manager's radar and, and things like that. He got himself a goal at, at, at Retford, but hasn't really done much, too much since. Um, Nathan came for a minute. If I'm looking at the two of them, he's probably edging ahead of him. Um, I, you know, he, he got bits and bobs at Notts County last season when we were saying we wanted to see him come back in and sort of have a go at it. Um, but, is that time maybe January time? Does he need to go and get games? But when in terms of getting games, I mean consistent games and be yeah. the number one striker at a club. Because at Notts County last season, he you know is a in respect to him, he was a bit part player for them. He was never really a regular starter, which was very very frustrating. Yeah, I mean when he did get a, he did have a bit of a spell where we're we're getting a few sort of consistent games. We, we were kind of saying at that point, you know, is this season then going to be maybe an opportunity for him to? Maybe go on loan again, but to another team in our league, or you know, or, or we're going to try and see if we can get into our team. But I think from what he's displayed so far in pre-season, um, and because of what we've brought in strength-wise going forward, you know, I like say Nathan Kane's doing doing pretty well, and you put Tyree Sinclair ahead of him at the moment. Um, is another loan down to the national league, maybe not necessarily to the likes of Notts County, who have got a got big squads you know, usually maybe a different side who who might need him a little bit more and therefore play him more, would that be more benef- beneficial for him? Or do you see if he can go to another League Two club and, and mix it up in our league, but then you risk him not getting played as much? So for me, I'd be going, maybe looking him back and going back to National League until January, but to one of those teams that you say would be mid-table uh, and get some consistent games in him. I don't know where to stand on this one. I think... It's very much now or never for Jimmy this season. I think, as as horrible as that sounds, because no, I agree. He's he he's not. He is a young player, but he's it's now getting to the point where you can't keep him in the youth team because he's too old. But he's too young for the first or too inexperienced for the first team. And if he's not doing it straight away, then you you can only send him out on loan so many times before he becomes a bit of a like the village bike, he, everyone's had him he, and he's not really done much. And you, you get, it's just, where do you send him in the National League though? You send him to a competitive team in Notts County and he doesn't do it. But you still want him to keep him at a decent level. So you don't want to drop him to a team that's still in the National League but not doing as well or expected to do as well. But then where do you send him? Do you send him somewhere like Stockport where he's not going to get a game and he's be playing second fiddle? Do you send him somewhere like Dover where he's going, probably going to be one of the main players but can't do nothing because the rest of the team isn't there? Where where do you really stand on him? I mean, for me, you know, he's one of those players who, who broke through and we wanted to see him develop and we want to see him develop and it's the same with Nathan Kane as well. But I think you're right. I think he's got to go somewhere. It's got to be the right fit where he's the first choice but he's getting the service. He's got goals in him. He's got that potential. And we've... I think we've definitely seen a development in him since he's he's, he's been away and it, it has worked well and he looks more of a physical player and uh, and things like that. But he's definitely um, uh, it's definitely one of those where you've got to get some game time. You've got to get build a reputation 
for yourself, especially in that position, and especially when you're coming up against players like Reese Oates, you know, Ollie Hawkins, Danny Johnson, Jordan Bowery for competition in the first team squad. It's a very, very tough one. And like uh, Clive says in the comments, um, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Sadly, I don't see him making it here. He also asked what you doing in his seat. Obviously, had a little comment Ooh. come here with us at, at Matlock. So there you go. <laughs> um, uh, Jamie says, what about York City in the National North League? Uh, and just see how he does. Obviously, uh, Mason Campbell, who left the club, uh, the young goalkeeper has just signed there as well. Good, could be a competitive level. Again, it's all about service, isn't it? But... It's how long do you leave him there? Because the, there is a, a vastness in indifference. Do you keep him around as a spare, as, as a backup? But I think you've got to. That's one it. thing we need is we need a reserve team. We've we've got to have a reserve team. Well, yeah, I think that's the key thing. Obviously, it didn't happen last season. Hopefully, it does this season because quite like going to the reserve games on a on a Wednesday afternoon. It's quite good, but. Uh, You've got a child now. Yeah. You can't be doing oh, those yeah, things. You uh, might it, be a bit busy now, mate. Sorry to. <laughs> so <sorry>. you, but <laughs> it, I don't, I don't really know because I think reservedly, especially at this division, it, it can be such a mixed bag with teams. Like sometimes you'll be playing kids. Sometimes you'll be playing practically a first team that need minutes, and that that's the that's the thing with the reserves. And and then the games are so few and far between a lot of the time. Mm. The, the, the thing is with. The thing is with, with, with Jimmy Knowles, the f- I still think he can mix it up in in the National League. So you, I don't actually think the fact that he had played a bit part with Notts County was entirely his fault. You yeah. know, because you look at the comments from from the fans. You know, Notts County um, when he did play, they were quite happy. Yes, he fizzled out a little bit towards the end, but that's when the pressure was ramping up for them. You have got to remember that, and he's mm. he is he's still you know got a young head on his shoulder. So that that would have played a part. You know, maybe in his performance is dropping at that point, and he's got to grow with that as as he as he develops. But when it came to the end of the season, you know, we he, he was out of uh, you know he was running up of, out of contract with us, and there was still a hell of a lot of Notts County fans that said they'd still like to see him sign for them. So that that says something. You know, it, it's not like he went there and he was awful, and he he quite clearly wasn't good enough. You know, so that potential is there. So that's why for me, I I I would certainly keep him around, and like I say, Jan maybe. Get him out on loan until January. Um, hopefully, he could get a good spell during that time, and then then get him back with us and just you know give him a, give him a little bit of a chance. Because I think until he is really given a proper chance, we're never going to know, are we? Let's talk keepers. The second part of that um, comment talking about either sending Marek Steck out on loan or, or whatever. Um, obviously, the the third choice keeper this season on the transfer list. Um, Nigel Clough said after the Coventry game that they'd been very little interest in him. Um, at the minute um, but he wanted to keep him around because we we need uh, three goalkeepers um, interesting situation I, I am still absolutely baffled Cam that we've got two of the, the two goalkeepers we've got are both loney keepers uh, it's weird but Marek's Marek, a fantastic goalkeeper I don't really understand why we, we were keeping him as a third I thought he'd be at least be second but it, it depends what Clough's wanting to do, I guess. I suppose. Have you got baby brain? Have you forgot the game where he dropped the ball into his own net? From yeah, he, d- he did. Christ. But I did. But I've also got that down to a severe lack of communication last season between the goalkeeper and defence. And I mean, it, you, don't, you don't need to, you don't need to communicate to catch the ball. What? <laughs> but like, positional true. wise, no, I'm, I'm going to catch it, guys. That, you know, that, but that, positional wise, I think just last season, I think. I, I can't say write the season off as a general, but I think the form of some players definitely took a hit last season. You think Aidan Stone had a, a stinker towards the tail end of the season, and it, it, it was just a real, a mixed bag last season was, because we were fantastic in some parts, horrific in others, and then bang average in, in, in other parts. So you can't take too much from last season. I think Marek, I think he deserves a chance, but... It depends on what Clough really sees, and it's whether if we get any interest. If someone comes knocking, I think same with Jimmy Knowles. If someone comes knocking, do you cash in on them? Do you, do you keep them round for spare parts, or do you cash in on them? Uh, Clive says there's some evidence that Clough doesn't like Steck's attitude. Um, I, I I think that there's there's something to that as well, and I think a big part of that is the fact that he hasn't been given a squad number. I mean, you look through pre-season, obviously. 
on the images which they put out in training, they've all got the squad numbers from sort of day one. Um, and a few friendlies, you know, they, they tend to wear their squad number, but don't have their names on the back. Certainly in the last couple of games, they've had the names on the back. Um, Steck, when he's played, hasn't had a number on the back of his shirt, whereas other goalkeepers have. Um, even when we've not had names on the back of the shirt, other goalkeepers have. So to not have a squad number, Nath, absolutely says a lot about, you know, your... Your, you know, you're probably your position um, at the club. I think if he goes, though, I think I do think Clough will bring a third one in, and we do need for me. Shelby, I saw him against Hall was was decent, made a number of good saves. Bishop, we need to see a little bit more of, but got a good reputation. I still think that we need to cover our asses and have a permanent goalkeeper, permanently signed keeper. It's, it's like you say, it's really strange, isn't it? Because when I can't ever really remember us going into a season with two. Lone keepers, what, what, two young keepers, and no sort of. Um, you normally have one, at least one main keeper who's sort of on the older, and uh, yeah, around, you know, around your thirties or so, and then you have two to back up. Whereas it's kind of, kind of the opposite now. So, um, well, it, obviously, if we if we discount Steck altogether, so if he does leave, uh, I, I'd imagine if like if an offer comes in, provided it meets our terms, and obviously it's got to meet Steck's terms as well. So. It's not always as simple as us accepting an offer. He's then got to want to go, so there's that to look at as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I think if he leaves, obviously we've obviously got to bring somebody in. There's no, there's no two ways about that. Yeah, we'll talk about other players uh, as well later on. Uh, let's move our attention back though to pre-season performance um, so far, especially um, you know that Coventry game. First time back at the One Course Stadium, we saw you outside uh, the bar, Nath, uh, getting your usual place, getting a, a pretty much drinking. What was it like to sample in that atmosphere again after such a long time? Uh, it was, um, I think we all said it was just very special, wasn't it? I think everybody that was there felt that, even um, even with it only being a friendly, you know, the atmosphere was, was superb with around sort of 2,000 you know, 2, plus Stags fans there, you know, all packed into the... Uh, into the West End, which was uh, you know did create a bit of a you know great atmosphere every now and then, but just to be back at your own ground, you know, I, I really enjoyed Retford and and Matlock, apart from the performance, uh, Matlock and the and Alfreton, you know that that was they were great, but nothing beats being back on the you know in, in your own seat, you know, in your own own stadium. So, and it you know what it's just made me even look even more excited now for you know for that Bristol Rovers game because that's obviously. Uh, that's different gravy then, isn't it? You, it's they, you're gonna have an away, an, a massive away following from them, and it and it means more. So uh, I'm hoping we'll, we'll we'll pack the stadium, and uh, I think it'll just feel like a, a brand new start with the club, which is what we kind of needed that reset, but I needed pressing, and I think we've done it. There you go. I've just pressed it. <laughs> um, honestly, though, I think I genuinely taken for granted how much being at home means and being in that stadium means because you know you can watch it on on telly and and everything it, you you're watching the game it feels like you're supporting the club but it's the little things you don't realize I was obviously fortunate enough for a while to still be at the stadium every other day or whatever with my old now old job um but I'm not there anymore, and you know I'm I'm going there like everybody else now, once every every fortnight, and it just felt so special because you forget what it's like when you hear the beep, when you scan your ticket, when you hear the click of the turnstiles, when you walk up the stairs and start to smell the kiosk, even though they weren't open. But you know what I mean. Um, you walk out the f when you walk through, you know the little uh, the little gap down to the, the walkway and you get that first glimpse of the pitch you walk up to your seat and you take a sit down and then you see all the the faces around you and you get chatting that's special in itself but what got me camp was the very first minute of the game you know the teams come out on the ball plays now i've tried to play on the ball on this podcast but for, for whatever reason facebook live stream doesn't like on the ball and and uh, mutes the audio so I can't play it anymore so I'll have to go back to, to something else but that sound starts to play the teams walk out and then something hit me it was that cheer of yellows everybody on the feet applauding every single person in that ground just ha you know happy to be back and reunited and I don't think I've ever clapped a team out and cheered a team out whilst tears have been running down my face because I, it was at that point where you thought there was a stage where I didn't think we'd get here again and 
you know, in in the way we have been. I thought it might be. In a way, I'm glad that we never actually got to go during COVID. You know, like when some fans got that opportunity of had the you know the reduced Back in capacity, December, yeah, yeah, and things had to be spaced out. Imagine sort of having you you're right, you two sit there in your bubble, but then there's got to be four seats over there. And it doesn't. It wouldn't have felt right. It would have felt almost like a, a training game or a reserve team game. But to have everybody there, not necessarily crammed in, but you know it, that snug feel, that togetherness feel, that was something else really was something else it was um i think the moment that that um that sticks with me the most was when the players did not even walk well, not officially walked out the tunnel it's uh club said it was too warm in the dressing room and they were just going to come sit outside that first moment of the players walking out and just perching on the end of the of the quarry lane end it was just special and then when they did finally walk out onto the pitch it was just it, it really hit you that we we were home and it was it, it's been a long time coming and there's obviously there's been a lot a lot there's been a lot of loss th- between it and a lot of heartache and a lot of a lot of danger but things are starting to go back to normal things aren't going to change things are going to stay this way and and just get better and better hopefully and and hopefully people firstly if you've not got your jab please get your jab because we don't want to lose football again no, I, I I genuinely won't be able to stomach if we have to watch it on through iFollow again. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love doing this stuff afterwards, and a lot of people actually. This was really humbling actually for me. I don't know if it was the same for you, Nath, because obviously we didn't sit together. But Cam came and sat with us in the second half with his dad, and there were a lot and sort of was around us before. And there was a lot of people that were coming up to us and saying, I, I can't remember where it was. I think it actually might have been at Hull where someone said this to me. There was a guy who was sat a couple of rows behind us and said. I just want to thank you for doing all the post-match stuff afterwards because that kept me saying that felt like football and I genuinely miss that element. I know you won yeah. it as well, Dave. You loved it, loved it. But to know that we made a difference and that we got people through, not just a period in time, but a really difficult period in time as well because you never know what's going off. So, you know, there were some people that living on their own couldn't see that you know the the grandkids grow up and, and all of that stuff. So. That was really difficult in, in itself, but to have people say that to me, to Cam, to you was really, really special. And I think that's what made me so emotional before kickoff at the home game because we'd got through it almost together. Yeah, um, I've, I had a, a Retford as well and a, a Matlock where people come say, "Are you still going to do the the pre match and post match?" <laughs> like, um, yeah, we, as much as we we loved it, and um, I'm glad it was. I'm glad other people enjoyed it along with us because yeah. um, it does. It is, you know, we all would have uh, been sat, sat listening or, and watching the games anyway, uh, as as we religiously do or, or would, because uh, if we can't physically attend, but it's that community feel as well, isn't it, about being at a match with with other people. So by doing it virtually, we we managed to bring that a little bit to to, to people, which is what obviously the aim was. So to know that people were enjoying it was great, but. Uh, and as much as we'd love to carry it on, obviously it wouldn't be physically possible. Imagine doing that on a Tuesday night going to uh, Colchester away. You know, we'll have to <laughs> we do it in the car on the way down. Sat, yeah. sat, sat at the back at SSA just yeah. <laughs> on the phone like that. Going, Come on. Losing signal every five yeah. minutes as you're going down M1. You know. yeah. uh, but no, you know, it's uh, we we will go back to our usual uh, usual routine ish, whatever we usually do. I but, can't uh, actually remember what we used to do. Yeah, what are we usually wasn't it? Thursday night on a Thursday night. Some, sometimes six o'clock, sometimes six, seven o'clock. Six thirty. Ish. I mean, ish. And if it's going to be any time this season, someone did actually genuinely ask me what's going to happen. I was, probably Thursday <laughs> nights, but it definitely won't be half six because you know, if I get stuck in traffic, we are screwed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but, uh, more, no. more like seven. <laughs> seven, yeah. yeah. Ish. Yeah. ish. Seven ish. That's why we go with the ish. But uh, no, it was, um, you know, we. It was it was a tough time, but at least we, you know, sometimes social media can be a very bad place, but then it also has its massive positives because it en- enabled us to do this, which I think uh, you also have to appreciate. Yeah, I certainly appreciate us being able to have that opportunity to do that. So, yeah, it'll be, but it, it doesn't be being in the ground, does it? No, also, it doesn't. We, t- we were talking about this on, on Wednesday. We were stood with Dean Fouts from the SSA at, at Basewood, and we were saying, like, which we, is why we, we didn't see any of the yeah, second half, by the way. We we were just saying to him, and we just said, even if people didn't watch us, we'd we'd have still done it pre and post match. We'd it just been us three, but it it was just that sense of normality because even at the one call, we'd usually end up meeting up. Usually, at the what was the bottom of the 
the gravel that's now tarmacked over which is absolutely nice. brilliant um but yeah we'd meet up and we'd have a chat and then we'd usually pass on the way out and it's just that little bit of interaction that we'd get on a match day that we'd have missed the most and i think being able to just have some sort of company especially when that's that third lockdown hit in january i was in manchester on my own that that was fun but it meant I could still watch the football and I could still interact with people. Cause... Was the damage already done then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. No, that was December. Anyway. Um, <laughs> thanks. Family show. Behave. Um, have it back. <laughs> but you can have it back later. Um, but it, it's just that social interaction. And yeah, if it, it did great for our viewing figures. Like we've, we've connected more with people now than we ever have before because people were turning to social media to yeah. watch to watch the games and and to to talk about it rather than <clears throat> being in the stands or in the pubs and, and and as much as that hurts and not being able to go home it's it's fantastic to see uh, such a a stags community that we have got and but yes i mean thanks for watching but we we'd have done this even if people didn't watch i mean i will say this right you know if obviously people have been asking us to do it right we can't do it after an away game that's pretty much impossible but we could, could do it after a home game, could. And I use the word very, very loosely. <laughs> if the club wanted to help get fans into a bar or a suite and to get a little bit more money through the till and maybe, you know, get that match, post-match day feeling in, I would be very happy for one to maybe have a little area set up in one of the one of the bars to do a cool-down post-match reaction show live from said bar at say like half an hour after the full time whistle because there's what an average of two bar the first month two home games a month on a saturday a saturday after saturday afternoon saturday's only tuesday nights we've all got to work the next day saturday evening if the club wanted something like that i'd be very happy and i'll say it now to do something like that if they wanted to back us in that by by of giving us a bit of an area putting a little bit of a budget to it because it's not free to run this this setup it's it's not an easy thing if they wanted to do something like that or someone wanted to do something like that i for one would be open for doing that at a home game nath on a saturday <laughs> at a home game I can we just... are not going to be broadcasting from plymouth from the back of a bus <laughs> or wherever you know unless I... it's uh we're just still promotion you know we that, might... well that's different then that's controls. on the party bus we might do a bit of a live stream then but like, yeah yeah uh, but no i can just see this i can just visionary vision it now like you know mm. little sign there saying the mansfield matters podcast lounge in the corner yeah you know, yeah I like this live audience selling and, it to uh, me yeah you know, yeah let's 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 get it sorted we're announcing this this is like a thing that's happened it's literally not we haven't even ever discussed anything like <laughs> this, this is but... literally just off the top of my head <laughs> this, now. Is just load, this is this is like the current kind of cut from uh that was rubbish that was brilliant this, is, this, is great. this has actually got a bit of decency we, about we it. thought we think of brilliant <laughs> ideas on this we podcast we do we do we really do <laughs> uh, so yeah if anyone wants the club or any sort of organisation that wants to back that wants to get in touch we'd certainly be open for talking about something after a Saturday home game but the regular podcast will be back Thursdays probably 7 o'clock ish uh, more on that to come. Uh, let's uh, take a little break from us talking now. Let's get the reaction of Stag's boss Nigel Clough, who gave his reaction to uh, the Coventry City victory, um, of course, on Tuesday evening when fans returned to the One Core Stadium. Here's Stag's boss Nigel Clough. Physically, the lads worked it very hard. Those who needed 90 minutes got it, and then it was a good performance as well. It's a bit like Saturday, encouraging. I think you can see the signs of how we're, we're trying to play and what, what we want to do. Uh, so it's sort of setting the tone here, hopefully, for 10 days' time. We finish the season like that. The three, obviously, who get us going are the three in midfield. Uh, Maris Quinn and Ollie Clark uh, goes through them and uh, one and two touch and things like that and we uh, we cause some problems and I think on another night we'd have probably scored two or three goals I think uh, we put some great balls into the box especially Steve McLaughlin from this left hand side in the first half uh, and created chances all throughout the game and on another night you, you do get a few more goals but one was enough tonight against a you know a young Coventry side. Um, but you can still see their quality. You know, you always when you play a team 
couple of leagues above. Even the youngsters have this quality and the movement and everything. Uh, so it was a very, very good, I think it was a perfect game for us. Uh, we didn't learn an awful lot about Nathan Bishop <laughs> because he didn't have much to do, but uh, very, very pleased with his concentration, his position, his distribution, all those sorts of things. Uh, absolutely thrilled uh, to have him, in the, have him in the team at last. Uh, and defensively, I thought we looked pretty solid. They had you know, one or two chances throughout the game, which they're going to have. Uh, but very pleased we had a chance to see Elliot Hewitt at right back uh, as well as an option we look pretty solid having lost to Matlock and Grimsby and then you, you beat two championship sides that's why pre-season really does count for nothing apart from the physical side of it and the sort of pattern of, of how we're trying to play uh, but uh, a, a lot of promise there I hope that we're not one of these teams that would play better against better teams you know we've got to deal with all sorts in League 2 that will be one of the biggest challenges I think the variety of uh, of teams that we come up against. We know against good football sides, we, we can play, uh, but we've got to deal with the other side as well. Well, it was wonderful because when you walk out uh, before the game, so it was a bit warm in the change room, so we came out and sat sort of down at the bottom of the stand here and uh, the noise picked up from there. And to think there's, what, only about 2,500 Stag supporters in tonight, uh, they made an awful lot of noise. And uh, I think all the players uh, surprised them a little bit. Some of them have obviously been here longer, um, but for the new lads who haven't played in front of crowds here, and myself included, uh, it was a it was a lovely feeling. Stags boss Nigel Clough speaking about the uh, win over Coventry in midweek. Keep your comments coming in and have your say on your team. Be around for about another 15 minutes or so. Let's touch back upon the performance then. Um, I genuinely forgot that when we do these podcasts in person, we can talk to each other whilst that's playing. <laughs> because when we're doing it virtually, obviously I'm, contro- I'm in control of all of the stuff that's, that's here, like um, you know the, the audio player and stuff like that. So I'm sort of watching it and getting the time ready and, and thinking about that. You two can talk to each other though because I sort of mute you on the, the mixing desk. So it's always weird to have those little conversations in, in, in the middle. I always for, almost forgot about them. But there it's, you go. it's been great. We, we were just uh, all the time just slagging you off. Or, yeah, oh, I you can imagine. hear us. So yeah, was I, that I mean, this is a lot better than what we used to have too. Remember yeah. the early old days? Oh, God, when we used to like play it on the phone and stuff. Through and, the speaker. Yeah. And we had to be deadly quiet. Jeez. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then we didn't know how when f- the audio was going to run out. Yeah, how far? The, how far oh, things? I'd like to say yeah. I think we've we've improved a little bit over time. You see, I think bit. we're definitely in a position now to be able to do regular live broadcasts from an area of the ground after a Saturday home game. Hint, hint, hint wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, just yeah. for a five-figure fee as well, you know. <laughs> Maybe get a little guest. I'm just thinking about getting all the fans. I just want to do something to get all the fans together. This is what has annoyed me about um, having to put Legends Live back. So we were going to do Legends Live too about this time of year, but what with work commitments and uh, other things, other interferences, um, <laughs> we've sort of had to push Yikes. it back a little bit. So, um, you know, it, it would just be nice to get everyone to get back, get back together, but... Uh, in the same room and stuff. So if you know if people are interested, just give us a shout. Anyway, let's talk performances because Kem actually hadn't made a good point in that. One thing we've not talked about is the fact uh, of our performance too much. We have at one end of the pitch with you know Johnson and Hawkins, but at the other end defensively, um, I think a li- it's probably fair to say we were a little bit concerned when we brought in a defender from a relegated side camp, but he's performed very very well, Elliot Hewitt, and uh, you know showed us another side to his game. On Tuesday night at right back with with Kel Gordon out injured, he played pretty well. Decent pass on him. He can certainly cross the ball. He was absolutely fantastic. And then Stephen McLaughlin on the other side. It was just whenever we got it wide to either him or, or McLaughlin, it was just very dangerous. And and that'll be obviously somewhere that we can improve on throughout the season. Obviously. Uh, McLaughlin's a little bit more comfortable at left back and he can play pretty much anywhere on that left hand side whereas obviously Elliot Hewitt can but he's a bit more comfortable in the middle but very flexible either way and obviously I think Cal Gordon would have been starting had he have not collided with Reese Oates but he's definitely stated to claim to be at that position whether that's as a backup or whether that's as a starter but um, yeah I'm not too disconnected discomforted by the defence at the moment. I think we're still a little bit short, maybe as a, a centre-back, obviously, to play Jordan Barry at centre-half, but um, obviously it depends on what happens with Corey O'Keefe. If if he comes out, will somebody else come in? Presume so, but um, what position would that be in as a left-back? Obviously, we've signed Ryan Burke, uh, so 
Well, you see, the, yeah. the left back situation for me, I think think we find we've got Ryan Burke there, who's looked all right in pre season, decent little backup. Obviously, McLaughlin's going to be left uh, first choice there. Um, Perch can play there. We've also got Jaden Charles as well, who we who we, we signed. <laughs> Not seen a, a lot of him in pre season. I think he might have had a bit of an injury or, or whatever, but he's in there as well. So I think we're fairly covered on that side. Right hand side. You know, I'd put James Clark before O'Keefe anyway. I think at the minute in the pecking order, he's performed well in pre-season as well. Obviously, Perch can play there as well. I think we've got enough options. We're just short in the middle for me, Nathan. Again, another bit of evidence for getting uh, bringing another central defender, and is the fact that squad numbers-wise, there is no number five yet. No, which um, I mean, we do know obviously early on in the season we we lost out on on Tom Naylor, which was going to be basically our biggest signing, wasn't it? So, um, you know. Nigel Clough was quite open about that. He was going to be a, a, a big earner. Uh, and then obviously that deal fell through in the end. So, um, you know, I don't think we've really replaced, you know, replaced him with that, you know, in that position. You know, we may have used the funds elsewhere better, which is great. I think we are looking very good going forward. Um, when you, when we, I think we've added on to what we, some quality that we had last season. So that's great. But, I am still a little bit worried about our defence. You know, I know we didn't concede against Coventry, but or, or look like conceding against Coventry, but it was a young Coventry side. Um, and yes, we you know, we did pretty well against Hull as well, but um, I don't feel like it's changed a great deal from last season. And last season, it, for a lot of the game, lot, lot of the season, it, it wasn't great. So um, I really do hope to see you know a, a centre back coming in, but not just any centre back. You know, I, I don't want it to just be a young player who. You know, like a Jaden Charles, who who might come and do a bit part, you know, be a bit of cover. I think it has to be a good, solid, sort of experienced and reliable centre half. I don't like using the term marquee signing cam, but I think it does need to be that, doesn't it? Because you look at what Clough has said. Um, you know that we were like pretty much relying on building a defence around Tom Naylor. Rug was pulled. We haven't brought anyone in other than Elliot Hewitt. Um, he seems to have still preferred Rawson and Perch as the central defensive partnership um but i think we definitely need something else in there someone exactly in that nailer build that can come in and play he's, he's got the experience maybe the experience of a high level as well can come in and play center half but can also slot in at a number of positions center mid cdm as well um i think we definitely are are missing that one tiny piece of the jigsaw and i think until we get that obviously you know we've still got quite a bit to go in the transfer window but the season starts next week until we get that that bit of added experience and quality i think i'm i'm going to be on on the same thought process as nathan as that too much we haven't changed too much of what was quite a, a leaky defense last season no I, I yeah we were quite a leaky defense i think we sorted his ideas out towards the tail end of the season when clough really managed to make his mark on the team and we performed decently well on Tuesday night I'd say and I think point proven Farron Rawson had Tyler Walker in his absolute back pocket he was taking him out with his keys when he's got home but um, we definitely do still need someone and obviously there's a few names floating around all gone quiet at the moment of any signings but there doesn't seem to be anything on the cards so obviously we're just fans and we don't know what's going on behind the scenes but there just doesn't seem to be anyone no no one linked with us, no one particularly on Twitter or anywhere else. It just seems to have gone all quiet, so I'm not 100% sure if we will, to be honest. I definitely think we will. I think Clough has definitely said that he wants one more, Nate. I don't see yeah. Clough being happy. Well, I suppose I, that depends on if someone goes out, though. Well, uh, yeah, you look There's at one, O'Keefe. One in, one out. You look at maybe, like, say, if we can shift O'Keefe, and the good news is um, there's supposedly been a bit of interest in him in the last sort of week or so. I was, we was hoping to hear something this week and we haven't. So whether that's not materialised or whether it's still ongoing, who knows? That I mean, that could be something that goes to the wire, which is a bit of a problem then, because obviously that doesn't allow you time to uh, to make you move to bring somebody in, does it really? So um, my, 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 like I said, my only concern is that because if it, if we are waiting for to, to offload somebody first, are we then going to have to maybe just settle for another you know a lone player who? You know who who's not proven. You know yeah. who's not experienced, and it's it's slightly sad because to be honest, that is the only we've got one piece missing of the jigsaw, and I think that's it. It's just that Tom Naylor would have been that final piece, you know, or somebody of his caliber, and I think that's all we need to do to get it in. And then I said I'll, I'll be pretty, you know, pretty pretty satisfied with what we've done. But um, yeah, I, like I say, that's my only concern at the moment is that you look at the probably what you say our 
best back four is at the moment it is is a back four that we could have played last season so it's not really improved too much. Yeah, I think a lot of that will come with, you know, we've changed the style of football, of course we have. We've had a little bit of an alteration in that, but I think a lot of that will come in time. I still think we're definitely missing uh, that one piece of the jigsaw. That's almost all we've got time for on today's uh, podcast. Um, We'll try and possibly fit in another one during the week, depending on what happens, whether there's some transfer movement and and things like that. But before we go, there is one other thing which uh, we need to talk about um, upon you know the return to football and things like that, and that is the beauty of the match day program. Now, I imagine you two might have different views on this, um, but for me, I love a match day program. Obviously, a few years ago, the EFL brought in a rule where it said you don't have to produce one now; you can produce it if you want. Some clubs have gone digital. We never really had. We produced a like a magazine at the end of last season. Um, but will it come back? I think it will for this season, but then the future will very much depend on sales. But first, I want to get your your individual views on a match day uh, magazine. Nathan, I'll start with you. I mean, it's a bit different for me, obviously, because I can't read it physically. So um, based on that, obviously, they're not, they're not great. Not not, not going to be ideal for me. So and actually, a digital one would be better for me because then I can read it. So, you know, it's completely opposite of the argument, which I think is, you know what I think I would be saying if I could read it if I if I could read a physical copy but for me the bottom line is does it make enough money for the club you know is it an expense that's not worth um you know what comes in so you know I'm I'm going to sit on the fence basically if you know I think one thing for me about it is that a match day program becomes a memento it becomes a, a thing of that day like for example you know, Cam, you were saying before that you wanted to get uh, and you have got uh, a ticket from the whole game uh, because it's, you know, a memento of when Evelyn was born. Nathan, you would have perhaps wanted something from, from Port Vale. Everywhere mm-hmm. I go, I try and get something. Uh, obviously, viewers won't be able to see, but um, on the wall uh, where the cameras and stuff are, um, there's a like a, a barrier of tickets, like a sort of a, um, uh, what would you call it, like a border of, of tickets. I like to collect match tickets and staple them to the wall or keep them in a scrapbook and things like that. I've got a few match day programmes uh, behind Cam, which you might be able to see uh, on the wall um, there from, from down the years and stuff like that, where I've kept the covers for them. When I was a kid, I used to collect the posters that were inside them and sort of put them on my wall uh, as well and, and stuff like that. So it was a nice little memento, but uh, it, it's that thing, isn't it, of... If there was a digital one available, Nathan, would you purchase it? Um, it depends on the game, but you, because it doesn't, it doesn't actually have that same feeling as as owning the paper copy. So, if it was a a special game and I was actually really interested in the in the content that actually is provided, then then yeah. But then you like say you wouldn't have that that collectible item of it you know you know mm. it's, it's going to be sat in a folder or a, a file on your on your computer basically so it's obviously not going to be the same in that aspect um so i uh, yeah i don't that's why i'm sat on the fence of it because i i get the argument why you you'd really prefer to have one you know the paper copy because it's something you keep isn't it people people have collected them for for, for decades so um it'd be sad to lose them but like i say i think sometimes it also comes down to a financial decision what about you, Cam? What would you, what would you have if it was a digital one? Would would you have it? I mean, for me, I think a digital one would be great because you know that's the way we are in this day and age. But like read Nathan, it on your phone, yeah, and... like Nathan says, though, it, it's that thing of you know once you've read it, it, it just disappears. It's just a file on your folder. You're not gonna, you know, you, you're not gonna sit down in a couple of months' time and and try and go back to that that file and and that folder. It, it's a one time thing. Whereas you know a match day program, a physical copy you know you can pick up on and reflect on and, and whatever and especially sometimes the design wise they like become a series and it's like the squad or or like a, a book issue sort of thing which looks good on a case and for decoration so where w- where would you be on it see this is the issue because financially you think you've still got the same amount of effort for a designer to go out and actually design the program but then fill in the content with it so you've got the you've still got the original cost there. You've then not got the added cost of actually physically printing it and shipping it. So then, if you are going to do a, a digital one, you have to offer it at a reduced cost because. But also, you've got on the flip side that you've got some. It's got to be hosted in the right way because anyone can put together a, a magazine or a document as a PDF. 
but how does it then become accessible for Nathan or for anybody to read it with yeah, a screen exactly. reader? Yeah, exactly. You've still got... It, you'd have to do it as like a Word document as such because PDFs, or unless it's an editable PDF. And then it's still the, the faffing around. You've still got the original cost of actually producing it. Never mind printing it and shipping it. So then you've got to think, well, it's a digital copy of something that we've done in the past so you've got to offer it a reduced price because you've not got the added cost of actually physically printing it because you're not actually getting the same product mm. but then you can't offer it at a reduced price because you've still got to pay whoever's designed it will you recoup enough financially it, you, I'm going to be the same as Nathan I've got to sit on the fence I don't really know what to think I like them personally I've I've collected every program from the 0809 season. I've got every single one, uh, home one, cup games, everything, playoffs, uh, special one-offs. Um, so I like collecting them. But if they made a digital one, I'd still buy the physical copy mm. because I like the physical copy. But in the way of the world, everything is going digital. And I don't see... I think Stevenage was the first one in the league to go digital. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see it, but I, I, I can't imagine they sold that many. Yeah, it's a hard one as well, digitally, because you, you tend to produce it like an actual programme. So it's on like an A4, and then you're scrolling in to read certain bits of text, and it just doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right. For me... I'm like yourself. I collect, I collect them, um, and I have done. I've got most full sets. I mean, over the last couple of years, they've they've waned um, a little bit. Um, I have to admit that, which is quite sad in some respects, but also you know financial and, and other bits which which sort of step in. Um, that's that. But I wonder if there could maybe be a compromise here. What about a monthly production rather than a, a program game by game? What about something every single month so it's produced at the, for the last um home game of the season or you know it, it's produced in the last fr the last friday of the season or something it's got interviews in it's got all the usual stuff that you'd have in a generic match day program but it's both a physical copy and a digital copy but it wasn't as um you know it wasn't as frequent because you look at august you'd be looking at three four well you'd be looking at four programs wouldn't you because you've got four home games whereas you could just have one maybe at a slightly increased cost which was both print and digital well the way that I, I i see it is that i'm quite a big ice hockey fan i've been going to the ice hockey for years now and i, I still will be doing but the amount of games that you can have in a weekend sometimes you can play in two games in a weekend at home and the way that they've done it is that usually you will get a program but it's got the, the content for two games so you'll get like a, a squad list and then you can put in the goals, the assists, the penalty minutes and things like that. It's it's over two games. And then the playoff weekend, you've got four games that weekend and it's one programme. Do you kind of double them up? It's like our first three Saturday fixtures are all at home. Do you then say, right, we are going to produce a programme, but we're going to stick all three fixtures. So you're going to have, um, obviously, Stag's team will stay the same. It's the same as like pre-season. Mm. When you have yeah, a pre-season where you've got three different... Yeah. opponents and it's all the same program yeah do you then do that for a month where you say august we've got three home fixtures so we're going to produce one program we're going to have three lots of teams in it same content but three teams yeah i like that i like it because then, more you, of a broad then one. you can produce a block amount and if you sell them you sell them if you don't then you sell them at the next game what does what does your um your number one team do you know telford <laughs> I mean, I don't live in Manchester anymore, so joke's over. It's it'll never over, be it. over there, will it's it? Still in your blood, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Sheffield Wednesday or a, I'm a Blade or an Owl now, Ugh. apparently. Oh, that's a, that's a hoot. Oh, oh. That, that, that cuts oh, deep. Jeez. <laughs> jeez. Right, we are, we are at port two, so we're going to go. We're going to yeah. go. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, it's an interesting one, isn't it? So I'm sure it'd be a debate which, win, uh, which uh, continues on. As Clive says, money's tight. Program or pie? Program or pint, you know, which Ooh, if, you had to, if you had to choose... Pint you or know, pie. You know, pie or pie. Or pay a pound to come and see, like, a live podcast. <laughs> in, in the Mansfield Matters podcast lounge. 
with a, with a special with a guest. program. Yeah, you know, both digitally <laughs> and yeah. paper format. No, because then oh, that's a lot of content for me to do, and already this is a lot. So yeah, there so you go. So, see, this is, this is where the club's argument is about going digital. So yeah, yeah, that is very very true. <laughs> uh, last couple of comments. Uh, Clive also says uh, there's some. Uh, well, I've missed that one. Uh, Clive says we were clapping everything on Tuesday. Ball boys, stewards, ground staff, just great to be back. Uh, Paul says it was great atmosphere Tuesday night, but then I got pinged yesterday from Tuesday night. Uh, hey ho, roll on next Saturday, up the stags. I mean, the NHS app, let's be honest, is about as useful as our defence from last season because you can log. There's a genuine question for you. As I've pointed out to a number of people, you always log in, but you never log out. So I'm in currently in Spoons. I'm currently at Bowling. I'm currently at Retford. I'm currently at Matlock. I'm currently in uh, Manchester. I'm everywhere, me. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those. So there you go. Maybe it needs looking at. But whatever happens, just stay safe. And most importantly, get on with life because football is back. We are back in the same room. And do you know what? A journey is about to begin. Final thoughts from you two, obviously. We might try and catch up in, in the week. We don't know if we will or not yet, so let's just get the final thoughts out of the way ahead of the season. Uh, big month uh, ahead, four home games, uh, three in the league, um, and one in the Cup, of course. Then two away games, Colchester on a Tuesday night. Thanks for that. And then uh, Swindon <laughs> uh, to end the month um, as well. Predictions for this season. What do you want to see? Where do you want to see us? go how you know Ooh, how will um, we how will we fare this season because nathan we said when clough first came in that we you know it, it was a, the first part of the job was about consolidating getting the safety sorting the squad out we're at that stage now at sorting the squad out but we're playing some good fluent football expectation will be there but we've seen season after season about expectation so in fact We'll leave this more for thurs- for for in the week. I think we'll, this will make more of a bigger discussion in terms of expectation. But let's turn it round and say we're a week away from the season starting now. Kickoff will be in one week's time in ten minutes, uh, as we are at the minute. Um, how excited are you for it to be back? You've been to pre-season. You've been back home. How excited are you for it to be back? Yeah, uh, regardless of what happens this season, I think, well, unless we go down, um, you know, <laughs> optimism <laughs> is fine. Regardless of what happens, I mean, let's just enjoy being back back at football. You know, um, it's been, like I say, it's been such a long time of being away from it. And at some point, we never knew when, when we were going to be able to come back, if it was going to be capped, whether there'd be away fans or stuff like that. You know, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to Bristol Rovers possibly selling out that, yeah. that away end, you know. They've already sold like 700, haven't they? Yeah, so. that before they went on general sales. So, you know, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's revenue for the club, but most importantly, it, it creates an atmosphere. And, um, you know, that's one part of the part, you know, part of the game that we love. So, um, you know, whatever happens, I think let's just, um, let's try and not take it for granted, you know, enjoy it. Let's not um, allow any toxicity to uh, to creep in. Um, if things aren't going well or we get off to a slow start or whatever, let's just get behind the team because I think that's um, that one of the, when you run about the, the Coventry game um, earlier, I, one of the things I, I meant to say as well is it was nice to sort of have a bit of a connection between us and the players again as well. I think, you know, that, as, as tackles went in, the crowd lifted. You know, when the crowd lifted, the players lifted. And obviously, that didn't happen before you know last season. So, let's um, let's get behind the team and uh, and let's see if we can by having us there supporting them can push them in, on an extra ten percent and get us higher up that league. Yeah, definitely. I think we've got to we've got to have some expectation, but don't be like don't don't do a Mansfield basically, and don't don't expect too much. It, we are building. And the foundation blocks are there, and we as fans can quite clearly see what what Nigel and his team are wanting to do this season. But just the most important thing for this season is the fact that the fans are back. The Mansfield Matters podcast is back. But well, you say that, but someone's going back to Sheffield, so we're we'll end up going sure. to do it over <laughs> Skype anyway, aren't we? But there you go. Well, you two will be here. I might be on Skype, but well, we might be. But, we might. We might not be. I mean, you two have got ch- children now, so it's a lot d- uh, more difficult. Yeah, but so. don't. Yeah, but night. don't forget. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't forget about that date night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hurry up so we can get to Nando's. Yeah, but don't on. forget. Don't feel, forget. What always matters, Ugh. Mansfield. <laughs> The views there of Cam Felton and, of course, Nathan Edge. Thank you very much for joining us. We will be back on Thursday night at 7pm-ish, probably, as we talk about expectation 
We talk perhaps about one final pre-season friendly at Buxton. And most importantly, we look ahead to this time next week when we'll be walking up those steps, hearing the click of the turnstiles, smelling the bovril in the air and getting ready for another adventure to begin once more. Why? Because we're following the journey. The Stags are back in action and Mansfield will always matter. Join us on that journey and follow us on social media and much, much more in between. For now though, strap yourselves in and get ready. The final countdown is on. Football and Mansfield is back. We'll be right back.